Now I want to show you how to uh, do some screening on the data file that you have. So uh, the file that I'm using is already has been shared with you. Uh, it has been shared with you and the name of the file is workshop raw data. So find the Excel, it's an Excel file because I always prefer to start working on my data using Excel. If you don't have Excel and uh, Microsoft Excel, you may use uh, Google Sheets. So both are the same. Uh, and the functions of this of them are the same. You may also use any other software package. So you can use SPSS or any other software that you want. But um, here I'm using Excel. Uh, so um, you see in a data file, um, always there are some rows and columns, and each row, each row, uh, sorry, each column, each column is a variable or it's an observed variable, right? So each column represents an observed variable. It means one of the questions in your questionnaire. For example, let me, yeah. For example, the first column is respondents answer to subjective norms question. Then, so you may ask what is subjective norm one? Okay, let me show you my data file uh, model, research model first. So this is the model that we want to test in this course. There are five independent variables and here is a mediator that we will discuss later and one dependent variable. So uh, the model is to uh, explain intention to use Amos and um, intention to use Amos in my model is explained by attitude towards using Amos. It means if someone has a positive attitude towards the uh, towards using Amos, then uh, most there's uh, there's higher chance that the person will have intention, positive intention to use Amos. And what are the factors that explain attitude and then in return, uh, in turn, uh, intention to use Amos? There are five variables I have considered here. Um, subjective norms, image, job relevance, output quality, and trust. So subjective norms means what your... Uh, friends think about the people that you the, the important people around you uh, think about um, Amos so this means your influence from others about using Amos if your friends colleagues um, you know uh, they these people they say Amos is good and we are using Amos too there is more chance you will have a positive attitude towards using Amos and as a result there will be more intention to use Amos another one is image the if you have a positive image in your mind regarding Amos, then you will have more positive attitude, and as a result, you will more most more probably you will use Amos. If it's related to your job, and if the output quality is perceived good, and you trust um, this software and brand, so this is basically the model. Each of these latent constructs that have been shown, as we already discussed, with an oval shape, a circle, a round shape, because they are latent constructs. Each are, each is measured with several items or let's say several questions uh, that you already inserted in the questionnaire. So in the questionnaire, subjective norms is measured using let's say five or six questions and respondents answer to these five or six questions. Then there are maybe five or six questions on image and so on. For each of these, there may be five, six, seven questions in the questionnaire and respondents answer the questions on a scale of one to five. One means strongly disagree and five means strongly agree. Now, uh, so these are the questions that I talked to you about. For example, in this case, subjective norms in my model is measured using five questions. Image is measured using five que six questions, six questions, and so on. So each, each column is an observed variable or question. And each row is one case. So this is the first respondent that filled out the questionnaire. So he gave three to question one out of five, three to question two, two to question three, three to question four, and so on. This is the second respondent, third respondent, and so on. And in total, we have 305 respondents because the first row is the label. So 306 rows means 300. Yeah, see the first row is the labels, the name of the variables. 
So there are 305 cases. Now, what is the first step? The first step that all, all, I always do is I check for the typos, the mistakes, uh, you know, people made when they were, they were filling out the questionnaire. For example, if it's an, uh, if, uh, if it's a paper-based questionnaire, um, one of my research assistants or maybe myself may key the data into an Excel file, right? And we may make mistakes. For example, the one of the respondents may have given uh, five out of five and I make a mistake and I key, for example, 55, right? Or let's say here, instead of three, because we will do this very quickly. So I, when I want to key three, I may double press number three and then key in 33. So the first thing I do, I produce my personal experience. The first thing that I do is to identify these um, typos, right? The cases that I mentioned, it's very common. I mean, usually there are some cases, especially when you use paper-based questionnaire. How to find these typos? There are different methods. You can even use AMOS, uh, uh, sorry, SPSS for identifying these cases. But here I just want to simply show you that uh, what I do, I just press Ctrl and A together, means I have selected, you can see I've selected all cases, all data that I have here with cont pressing Ctrl and A together on your keyboard. Then conditional formatting, highlight cells greater than five, because I know that the responses uh, have been captured on a scale of one to five. So if someone's answer is six, this doesn't make sense. <clears throat> so those cases, those answers that are greater than five should be highlighted now. So I zoom back to see if I see any highlighted case. Oh, there is one here. And it's 22. So respondents number 22. 239 because as I said the first row is the label um, gave the answer is 22 so what we should do here we should go back to the original questionnaire find there so you need to quote the questionnaire when you want to key in the data and you create an ID column here to find out which questionnaire is linked to which of these rows so anyway to be it needs to be identified the questionnaires later if you want to double check them so I need to check the original question and see what was the answer. But I tell you based on my experience in this case, this 22 perhaps was two and I made a mistake and I pressed it twice, number two. So I changed it to two. Let's say I checked the question or I made the decision here. And oh, there's one more here. It cannot be 33 because it's a scale of one to five. So I changed this to three. So this is the first thing that I always do. Again, there are different methods to do it. You may find the maximum and minimum and then see whether yeah, something is out of the range you expect. So now I just remove clear the sheet, control A and then clear. So control A, it will select all cases, then go to again, conditional formatting in Excel and remove clear from entire sheet or selected doesn't matter so i just want to remove the rule the highlighting rule that i imposed now uh, the second thing that i always check is whether the respondents have read the questions have been engaged in answering the questions because this is a very common problem people who read the question they answer the questions they don't some of them sometimes they don't read the questions carefully they just give random answer. They just give five, 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 five to all questions. I named these respondents uh, reluctant cases. This means they just want to fill out the questionnaire because they want to finish it and leave it. So I want to find those cases. Indeed, in statistics, uh, to find to to run it, these tests, we need variance. If a variable doesn't have any variance, we it's like a fixed value, so we can't use it. It's the same for cases. If there is no variance in the responses of a respondent, uh, it's not really useful. So I want to remove those reluctant cases. So how to do? I want to show you a trick. Again, there are different methods, but this is what I do in Excel. You know how to write a function in formula in Excel? If you don't know, just Google, but it's very easy. I just follow my method. Even if you don't know, just follow my method. 
So when you want to write a formula in Excel, just write equals. Equals means I want to write a function, formula. Standard deviation, it will give you a list of available options. I go for standard deviation.p. This will give you the standard deviation of some numbers. So I open the parenthesis and then I select the first row. You just click and then drag the mouse to the last one, then leave the mouse and then close the parenthesis. Done. So I computed, the, I named this standard deviation. Standard deviation of the responses. What is the standard deviation? Standard deviation measures the variation, variance in the uh, distribution, in the, in the responses, right? Uh, in the data. So if there is no variance, standard deviation will be zero. And more standard deviation means more variance. So if the variance is zero, we remove the case. It means the person gave the same answer to all questions, right? So, <clears throat> uh, or another way is, I just write standard deviation, open the parenthesis, and I just give a range. So I know it starts from, the first row starts from A2, means this one. So I write A2 here, A2 goes to AL2, means column AL and row number two. So up to you which one you want. And then open the close the bracket, you get the standard deviation of the first row. Then we apply the same formula to all rows. I click, I just select this cell that already contains a formula. You can see the formula here. So I select and then put your mouse, put your mouse over this corner, right down, right? You see the shape of the mouse will change, right? It's now slim plus. When you get the slim plus, just double click. When you double click, it will apply the same formula to all rows. So, now I computed the standard deviation of all cases, all responses, right? Each row is a case, is a person. Now, um, we want to identify reluctant cases, means those who didn't read, they just gave the same answer to the questions. So how to identify again? I select the column, I just click here on the top, on the heading, click. I get, I, I select the whole column, right? Now I go to conditional formatting, highlight cells, rules, and anything less than, less than what? Up to is there is no rule. I just want to find those with small standard deviation and then I don't just remove them. I check the responses and make the decision. Um, this is here, this is scale of one to five and based on my understanding of the questions and the questionnaire, I would say usually I go for 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. You may ask me, okay, what is the formula? There's no formula, I just want to uh, highlight some cases, right? So you may go for 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, right? I would go for 0 0.3. So any standard deviation less than 0 0.3 has been highlighted, right? So this is one of them, 0 0.16. Now let's check the answers the person has given to the questions. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So all are 3 except one question which is 4. So it's a bit weird, you know, it seems the person just has given three to all questions except one of them. So what to do? I just remove the case. I click here, right click and delete. So done. I remove the case. I don't want these cases who didn't spend time to read the questions. This one is zero. Oh my God. Zero means he gave or she gave three to all questions. How is it possible to give three? Maybe it's possible, but I don't want these cases. <laughs> So I delete, go down, one more. All are four except one which is three for this case. Oh my God. I don't want you, you wasted my time guy. You wasted my time. And then scroll down, the rest it seems okay. Oh, uh, one more case, so I delete. So I deleted some cases and now I have 301 cases, right? And I don't need this standard deviation column anymore, so I delete it. So, yeah, 
this is the data file without any let's say all those typos that are out of the range and I have removed the reluctant cases and um, I have saved as this file and named it as workshop raw data here I can show it to you So I named the file as workshop raw data, no reluctant and typo. Yeah, so if you want to have the same file that I just created, it's here. Just double click on it and open it. And now how to identify missing cases? Just watch the next video.